and a half billion people confined in some way around the planet, almost half of the world's population. The COVID-19 pandemic has drastically changed our lives. An end to travel, industry slowed or stopped. So what does that mean for the environment? What impact on efforts to fight for climate change? Welcome to this week's special episode of Down to Earth. As we've just seen, drastic lockdown measures have all but emptied the roads, leading to a reduction in pollution from vehicles. If we take a look at these images from the European Space Agency, we can see dramatic differences in nitrogen dioxide concentrations between March 2019 and March 2020 in France, Italy and Spain. But despite what one might think, quarantine measures have had no effect on the level of fine particles. That's the particles most dangerous to our health. There's even been a spike in Paris and eastern France, largely due to agricultural spraying and individuals heating their homes. And studies suggest these fine particles aggravate the health impacts of coronavirus. When there's a peak in fine particle pollution, the well-known PM10 or PM2.5 particulate matter, our respiratory tracts tend to become more irritated. We are more sensitive to everything in the air. It's a well-known phenomenon. And as a result, pollution increases the risk of getting sick. Meanwhile, greenhouse gas emissions have fallen sharply, but not enough to have a significant effect. Now the UN has postponed its climate change conference scheduled for November. COP26, as it's known, was a crucial meeting, the most important since the agreement in Paris. A month ago, Greta Thunberg was marching publicly in the streets of Brussels as part of her Friday for Future movement. Today, the climate activist has moved her campaign online, calling on all supporters to keep up the fight, be it from the safety of their home. Now, with the major November climate meeting deadline postponed, it's yet another hurdle in the race to rein in emissions. Uh, the danger of doing it in November is that we might find that some parts of the world who've got coronavirus later than we in Europe have done would actually be excluded. And that would be a disaster to have climate talks which actually exclude particularly poorer parts of the world from taking part fully. One of the advantages is that it would mean the outcome of the U.S. elections would be known well ahead of the meeting, with campaigners hoping a more climate-friendly candidate will win office. This, as a Trump administration, ushers in a dramatic rollback to fuel standards, changes that will allow vehicles to emit about a billion more tons of carbon dioxide, equivalent to roughly a fifth of annual U.S. emissions. President Trump's rollback of the clean car standards this week was the absolute worst thing that he has done to the environment. And he's done a lot of damage to the environment. Uh, it, it is an outrage that he is doing this. It's even worse that he's doing this in the midst of a crisis. Although global emissions are currently down, there are concerns of a repeat of 2009 in the wake of the financial crisis. After a temporary lull, emissions skyrocketed as countries try to make up for the loss in productivity, a type of rebound effect as things got back to normal. If there's one area where the environment is not benefiting from all these changes, it's the way that waste is managed. Recycling is no longer a priority when the planet is up against a health crisis on this scale and waste collectors are also on the front line. It's business as usual for these waste collectors as they crisscross the north of Paris. For them, very little has changed, considered a part of the city's essential services although not a priority for masks. My mask here was given to me because we don't have any in our organization. So someone had to give it to me. We continue to work despite what's happening, but we're scared to death. We do it because we have to keep the city clean. If we didn't do our job, the trash cans would be overflowing and Paris would be even dirtier. Much of this garbage could potentially carry the virus. On plastic alone, it can survive up to three days. But what workers fear the most are masks, gloves, and especially used tissues, 
items often found in waste bins and sometimes discarded on the street. In the sorting centers, staff are particularly exposed when individuals believe they can be recycled. These items can't be recycled. Neither the gloves that are made of latex, latex cannot be recycled, nor the masks that are made out of a paper so fine that they also can't be recycled. More than that, these objects are potentially carrying the virus, and the people who sort the waste come into direct contact with them. By putting these items in the recycling bin, you are acting in a way that jeopardizes the health of these workers. Across France, recycling services are slowly grinding to a halt. Half the country, including Paris, has put an end to sorting waste, as the scale of the crisis places safety and hygiene above environmental concerns. The pandemic has also caused major disruptions to agriculture. Here in France, French supermarkets are now favouring products from French farmers, rescuing an industry on its knees. Jean-Michel Rousseau knows there's no time to lose because today, like every day, there are eight tonnes of strawberries to harvest. With the COVID-19 crisis, he's been through the worst in the last few weeks, believing all his produce would end up as garbage. The situation was really rough for about 10 days. We weren't selling anything, we had to throw some away. And then all of a sudden, uh, we were in the opposite situation with huge demand allowing us to catch up and to stop throwing crops away, although the prices are still a bit low. It's now full steam ahead after the government called on all major supermarkets to prioritise French and not Spanish strawberries, described as a type of economic patriotism. At this Paris supermarket, these will be the last Spanish strawberries for sale. Although the foreign variety costs less than French ones, customers will have no choice. It's a controversial move that's prompted criticism among those who say now is not the time for division within Europe. The policy that, that is, are being put by the French government, for example, to procure uh, from local farmers, is an important policy because it's protecting their own producers from the market. But clearly, as we are seeing, uh, producers, local producers cannot necessarily satisfy all the demand. And not only that, it's affecting the imports and the producers from Spain. I think, uh, and we believe, that it's not the time... Uh, to avoid the trade. It's time to allow trade to flow. It's a particularly difficult blow for Spanish producers who normally supply more than half of the strawberries sold in France. Already border controls have left them with a massive worker shortage and now it could be their turn to throw out entire strawberry harvests. Thanks for being with us for this special episode of Down to Earth. We'll, of course, be keeping you up to date on the latest developments, but we'd like to leave you now with images of some of the 400 parks and gardens in Paris as they blossom in springtime. If we can't be outside enjoying nature, then let's bring nature inside. <laughs>